I uh, respect his contention. I am believing he is so sincere in what he is uh, believing. But uh, sincerity is not enough to uh, nullify the absolute truth being taught by the Holy Bible. In Mark chapter 10, in Matthew chapter 19, and even in Malachi chapter 2, verse 16, as already quoted by Honorable Marcoleta in the previous uh, interpolation, he said, our creation, our creator said emphatically, he hates divorce. Malachi chapter 2, verse 16. We as creations, why do we have to oppose our creator? Secondly, the, 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 the thing being mentioned by honorable sponsor is, uh, I would say, I have to correct the interpretation. During the time of Moses, the Bible clearly says, divorce was really uh, anathema at the time, but Moses allowed uh, some people to issue certificate of divorce because of the hardness of their heart. And this was quoted by Jesus during his public ministry. The perfect will of God is not to allow divorce. He hates divorce. However, because God has given every human being a free will, human being is allowed to exercise his free will, whether to please God or to please the world. Now, Mr. Uh, Speaker, I maintain that... Uh, uh, this uh, legalization of absolute divorce is absolutely unconstitutional. However, I have to move on, going to the next point. This is about, is it pro-woman? Mr. Speaker, Honorable Sponsor, it is said that this divorce bill is pro-woman. Am I correct in saying that, Mr. Speaker, Honorable Sponsor, why is that so? Yes, uh, Mr. Speaker, this bill is definitely pro-women. And uh, thank you. data indeedably show that the overwhelming majority of the aggrieved spouses in shattered marriages due to violence, abuse, marital infidelity, and abandonment are the wives. Traditionally, in a marriage relation, the husband is more ascendant than the wife. It is the woman who is actually and usually brutalized, and it is the man who philanders and gets away with it. Under this foreboding and unequal circumstances, a wife needs absolute divorce more than the husband. Consequently, the absolute divorce is granted to liberate these women from a broken and toxic relation. Hence, absolute divorce is a pro-women legislation. Worldwide data also show that majority of the petitioners seeking divorce are women. Moreover, in a divorce proceedings, the wife as the innocent spouse needs a court decreed alimony and support for the child or children under her custody, and this is decreed by the family court. Finally, absolute divorce is not only a woman's issue. It is a poor woman's issue. Poor women cannot afford the exorbitant expense of legal separation or annulment of marriage or the nullification of marriage. This bill seeks to rectify this problem by ensuring that divorce proceedings are affordable and expeditious. 
and for those who qualify to be court assisted petitioners it is cost free thank you sir speaker madam sir, speaker mr speaker honorable sponsor it is based on empirical evidences it is our observation that the bill does not sufficiently protect poor housewives and women who do not have the capacity to go to employment for their own source of income, possibly due to age, lack of work experience, and or for any other reasons. In this bill, the court can require the husband to give support to the wife up to three years only, and the requirement does not come with a strict penalty if not complied with, because if the husband does not comply with the order of the court, the court would only cite the said husband in contempt of court. I understand that in the bill there are some specific penalties provided, but the disadvantaged wife, who has no money in the first place because she is poor, would need to go to court to have these penalties imposed. Mr. Speaker, Honorable Sponsor, assuming there is a poor mother who does not remarry after a grant of divorce decree and is therefore burdened by solo parenting of small children, how would that single mother possibly be sustained of her daily needs if the defaulting spouse who fails to provide alimony would only get a slap in the wrist in the form of contempt of court? How do we address this issue, Mr. Speaker, Honorable Sponsor? What will be the fate of the poor woman after three years? Moreover, is it right to say that this situation will force poor divorced mothers deeper into poverty? Mr. Speaker, Honorable Sponsor, is it also right to say that this situation may also force them to contract a second marriage in order for them to have a co-parent to sustain their needs and to support their children. What if they don't find a second husband to marry? Another question, Mr. Speaker, is that, that it would be a better choice for us to strengthen legal separation under our family code rather than pushing couples to resort to divorce, which leaves women more vulnerable. If according to the proponents, the divorce bill still hopes for the reconciliation of the spouse. This is another point. I'm giving way, of course, to honorable sponsor to make the remarks after my reply. Mr. Speaker, I hope the distinguished gentleman is not suggesting that poor unemployed women to just continue being enslaved in a toxic and broken marriage just because a divorce will not grant them sufficient alimony for a long time. Mr. Speaker, we are giving this divorce in order to afford women to, liber to be liberated from a hellish relationship. If the distinguished gentleman would like to extend further the duration of the alimony, then he can make the proper amendment at the proper time. We may consider accepting such a suggestion. But definitely, let us not let us not forced women to be in a toxic, violent marriage just because she is poor and could not afford to be separated from the abusive, philandering husband who might have even abandoned her already without any support at all. 
Thank you, Madam Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Honorable uh, Sponsor, again, I respect the contention of our Honorable Sponsor. But going to my next point, Mr. Speaker, Honorable Sponsor, there are researches that show that men are actually the ones better off after a divorce. Examples, in Germany, a study by Thomas Leopold in 2014 found out that women were strongly disadvantaged in terms of losses in household income and associated increases in the risk of poverty after divorce. Moreover, women's disproportionate losses in economic status were permanent. Taken together, the findings suggest that men's disproportionate strain of divorce is transient only, whereas women's is chronic. In the United Kingdom, research from London School of Economics showed that women's household income fell by 20% after divorce, while men's household income rose by 30% after divorce. Are we really after justice? I am afraid that we might overlook the empirical evidences. Mr. Speaker, given these studies, how can you explain that divorce is still pro woman and not pro man? I have explained it already, Madam Speaker, why divorce is a pro women legislation. If there are cases, which would, where the divorce would benefit the men, then they are more the exception than the rule because definitely it is the woman who suffers in a toxic, violent, abandoned marriage. And no empirical study can dispute this. Mr. Speaker, Honorable Sponsor, I'll try to abbreviate the uh, basis of my presentation of this interpolation. But still, I would like to remind everybody, if the evidence shows that divorce is anti-woman, is it then right to argue that divorce is also anti-children? Since reduced income for the family means less, lesser benefits for children. However, as our Honorable Speaker already said, he had already uh, given uh, uh, answers to those questions. And therefore, I thank you for all these questions, for answering my questions. But unfortunately, the evidence shows that the divorce bill is not absolutely and wholly a pro-woman, pro-children, and pro-family legislation because studies show that divorced women are more economically vulnerable and are worse off than men after the divorce. In addition, children are also placed in more adverse situations after the divorce. That's why I am opening our eyes that uh, we could probably improve the so-called uh, legal separation clause in our laws or the annulment, annulment of marriage or declaration of nullity rather than violate the command of God and invite and violate the Constitution. Now, going to my next point, uh, Mr. Speaker and uh, Honorable uh, uh, Sponsor. A survey by Okta Research Group last October 2023 found out that 51% of Filipinos oppose legalizing divorce while 41% approve it and 9% were undecided. Across socioeconomic classes, Filipinos are not in favor of legalizing divorce in the country. Mr. Speaker, what can honorable sponsor say about this? I, I answered the same question already propounded by the honorable Rupus Rodriguez. And I said that the quality and uh, integrity of a survey would depend basically on the question asked. 
And in the Okta survey, the question was very general. It says whether you agree or disagree with uh, a divorce law. It does not place the respondent in a particular situation. The survey of uh, other firms would be a much better survey because it places the respondent in a particular situation. Because if your question is, do you agree or disagree with an absolute divorce 